What's up, divas and divos? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, and it's also going to be chit chat. I hope to God that I don't make this video like two freaking hours long because seriously, that is like a long time to be talking to somebody and getting ready and chit chatting. Like, I don't want to be like a freaking motion picture, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a movie. I just want to be at least an hour. So we're going to try to get this over with for an hour because as you guys know, it is the day after Christmas while I'm recording this, which means the day after Christmas. I already did a video on it and I already made the song up, but I'm going to tell you all about it. It's Bath & Body Works semi-annual sale today. It does start, which means $10 for all three with candles. It does say today only, okay? So a bitch does want to get to the store and hurry up and get her day after Christmas. I got I got um gift cards and shit from there from my daughter, okay? So I'm just saying. And I also do have one coming in the mail, which I just get the tracking number from, which is from my loved one, my lover. Okay, my husband. Um, and um, also, I got to go to GameStop because I bought Nay the $60 membership for the PS4. I don't know what you call that online game playing thing where you could play. And why is it saying invalid? Like, hello, $60 does not grow on anybody's apple tree. So we're going to need that to be fixed today. And then my mom sent all of the kids gift cards. So mumsy has got one for Michael's craft store. And you know, she loved Michael's. So she is about to go spend that $50 gift card at Michael's. And Nay's also got a $50 one for GameStop. So she's going to get her car fixed and she's going to buy something. And then the other two, Tati and Tinky and Wuzzle, the three, they have Visa gift cards. So, you know, I'm just hanging out with Mumsy and Nay. So, but, you know, first things first, we're going to um, Bath and Body Works. Then we're going to hit up um, GameStop. Then we're going to go to Michael's. We're going to end it all with the craft store. I don't know how Mumsy's going to feel about that, but either way, she's going to have to deal with it. So, yes, today is the day after Christmas, but by the time y'all get this, it'll be two days after Christmas. And I really hope that you guys had an amazing celebration, celebrationes for Christmas, okay? I hate when my concealer creases. So, in case you guys are like, what lashes are those that you have on today? So, my daughter Tati put me on to these lashes. I really wasn't, like, the hugest fan of them. I don't know why. I'm just... I'm just me, okay? But these are the uh, Allure, Allure Lashes Definition number 126. She loved these. When I say she loves these, like, these are the only lashes that she really likes to wear. So I actually went to Target and cleared the shelves. And I ended up picking me up two pair also, but from another um, Target because the first one I cleared the shelf with. So she actually loves these lashes and I really couldn't understand why. And I hope you guys can see. I'm gonna just zoom in real quick for you guys so you guys can see, not zoom out, April. Zoom the fuck in. Okay, maybe I should turn them the other way, all right? So as you guys can see, she actually loves these lashes and she's had a pair for like six, I wanna say like five, six months. She's like, they got more volume. They got mascara all over them. What do you expect? But let me tell you, she loves them so much that when she broke them, they ripped. Did she have me try to fix them? I did fix them. I actually did fix them. But she still has them. And I've got her plenty of these and cleared the shelf off. And she still likes the old pair. Either way, these are really some great lashes. They do come with these little eye tweezer things to put your lashes on and some glue. I don't use either one because I don't need to. But you guys can see... I don't know if you can see them, but she says she loves them because they change the shape of her eyes. Um, I don't know. They just, they're, they're cute. They're actually $5 at Target. So, I mean, if you guys are interested, definitely check them out. They are the number 126s, and they are by the Eyelore. They go by color. The boxes are by color. So, as long as you find the eye box that's orange, then you're... Good money. You know what I'm saying? You good money. Then they got the Vegas Nay ones. Vegas Nay, I think that's her name. Vegas Nay. Um, I haven't tried those, but 
Tati loves these, so I like them too because they give me like this look. Like I'm, I don't know, I do like them, but you guys know how I apply mine. So I've had these lashes on. Today is the third day that I've had them on, and I haven't taken them off, of course, because underneath I have individuals, and then I lay the strips on top. So yes, that is how your girl does it. So before we even get into this, um, I am, I do have some things that are, um, I'm going to show, but this is basically at the end. So there's no makeup that I'm going to be like showing. Hey, I was sent this but I will say this hey I bought this shit okay so this isn't my palette because it's Tati's but we always borrow each other's palettes but when I seen hers well she always borrows my Morphe 350M 350M palette which is all matte colors and I love it because it's like natural neutral colors and it's in this color you guys see me use this like a million times okay so you guys see the two colors that are pan like you can see the pan those are the ones I use this one majority of the time but Tati uses this one and I use this one too so she's always wanting to borrow it always wanting to borrow it so I tried to find it for Christmas and um, it was actually sold out but they had this other really nice palette too which I was like okay hunties and this is the new one this is the 3502 which is second nature First of all, the whole entire sleek look of it is totally changed, okay, as you guys can see the writing. I don't really care about that, um, but the colors in here are so pretty. And what else changed about it? Do you see they have names over it? They have this clear sheet, which gives you the names of each freaking color, which is amazing. So they're not all matte. They're a selection of shimmer and matte, but I will say this. They're very close in color consistency. Some of the colors, only about three or four. Um, excuse me, not three or four. Yeah, I like about, hmm. I want to say like about three of them. Three, three or four. Yeah, it's actually, um, a color, um, you know, a difference, a, kind of similar. So like the colors that are similar are this one here, which is similar to, I think it was this one kind of like yeah so and then this one and this one they're very similar but this palette is so pretty the new palette because like I said it's neutrals and everything and it's also shimmer and I mean mattes and shimmer so I really actually do like it a lot so when I seen hers I wanted my own so I did purchase my own so it should be here today yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, you guys know I love like those earthy tones. And this palette right here, which is mine, the browns are more or less on the cool tone family. So as you guys see, I really don't touch them as much. Only the warm tone browns do I really go in on. I don't know what it is, but I really don't like like the cool tone browns. And this palette here, the new one, has more warm tone browns in it, as you guys can see. More of those like reddish color, warm tone browns and things. And I love warm colors on my skin. They just look really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and use her palette today. She did use it already, okay? So Because I would definitely never use anybody's things until they got to use them. So she did use her palette. She did a look last night with it. And I just love the fact that it has, they have names for each one. And the names are so pretty, like Universal, Pure, Orb, Tan, Sizzle, Amber, Bronze, Flux, Contour, Heat, Ablaze, Sauce, Fire, Ruby, Zodiac, Polished Spice, ter Terracotta, Brick, Rustic, Zippy, Dust, Ricky, Chestnut, Halo, Rich, Brave, In the Zone, Fawn, Stone, So Warm, Toast, Brunette, Muddy, and Wiz. So I like this palette a lot, especially because now they're naming them. And what's cool about it is you can either keep it over here. And if you're scared that you're going to lose the damn thing, the plastic, then hey, what you can do is you can go ahead and tape it here like this and this is probably what I'll do with my palette I'll tape it up here and I would always definitely tape it to where the universal word is up on the top so that way you know you're going from top to bottom and you'll never lose it okay so you can either tape it or attack like a couple of pieces like a hot glue hot glue at the corners and then you have it you'll have the sheet for life okay so with that being said we're going to um, go into this uh, real talk video. I know I always talk about myself, which I do like to do. Um, in case you guys are wondering, what did I get for Christmas or anything like that? Um, ah, let's see. I did get some lovely things from my lovely little mumsy. Okay, she made me some really cool gifts, which I'm like so fond of. She always makes me like the cutest things. But what was so crazy was the fact that 
Um, she did, um, she makes me cool things, but this year, did she take the lotion that I gave her and, um, gave it to me in a different bottle and she calls it Panda Care. So it was some lotion that I had originally gave her. She renamed it and gave it to me as in Panda Care and put it in different packaging. It's cute, especially for somebody who doesn't have money, you know, cause she's only 10. I mean, she does have money, but I think she spends it on herself. So I wouldn't be even begin to tell you what happened to her money. Um, I didn't think she had any, but either way, I love the fact that, you know, she makes me gifts all the time. She's so crafty. That's the reason why my mom gave her a gift card for 50 bucks at Michael's. Lord knows what she's going to spend it on, but she's probably going to go ham in the store. I do know this. She'll probably be looking for some clear glue, like the gallon size, Elmer's clear glue, the gallon size. I did purchase her some from Toys R Us for Christmas, um, but it wasn't the gallon size. It was like two big bottles, two huge bottles, but she'll go through that like we're going through milk here. So, yeah, and what else is there to talk about? Um, so, I'm so sad. Not really sad, but I'm on <sighs> my poor little sugar, my little mini poodle. Well, she's really not a mini anymore because she's gained so much weight. She's more or less like a fatty. I don't even know how she was a mini because she's not, well, she's short. So, I guess that's how you figure she's a mini. But she has gained so much weight, so it's so hard for her to make up the steps. Sometimes she gets out of breath quickly. So her and my dog Luna, my new dog, which is, she's four months old now. She's a little bit over four months. Well, they have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, which is Wednesday by the time you guys see this. And um, Sugar is sick. She was fine all day Christmas until, like, you know what I'm saying, in the evening really late in the evening i would say like two o'clock in the morning evening so it really wasn't even christmas anymore she has a cold so she was breathing heavily i thought it was from her overweight but yeah she has a cold i never realized that dogs could get colds um until i seen the fact that she has a little snotty nose so you know that kind of like put me on like super duper watch because you know my dog Coco recently passed away um, a little bit over a month ago, like five weeks ago. So, and we didn't even know he was sick or anything. He didn't show any signs of being sick. So it kind of has me like very leery and I'm just like praying for her and keeping an eye on her and stuff like that. So yes, um, that has, that is what I have been doing. Like, you know, like keeping eye out for my dog. This is just some LA Colors Mineral um, Press Powder. Powder. I put this on my lids too, and I also use it to set my makeup because that yellow stuff does not work for me at all. So any yellow setting powder does not work for me. I don't think it's meant for every fucking body, okay? And one thing I hate about doing my eye makeup is whenever I do it, my lashes that are brand new automatically get powder all over them, and I freaking hate that. But I do clean them at the end of the night, meaning I take some eyelash, not excuse me, eyelash, some makeup remover, and I put it on a cotton ball, so... That's the one thing that I do also do. So for those fucking people who think that I have on old lashes, bitches, no, I don't. They're brand new. And that's just the payoff or the freaking dust off of all the powders that I use on my my lids, my eyelashes. So this is what I be doing. But I use, like, makeup remover. I hate when that happens. Um... <laughs> I really don't have any any new news um for myself because you know it is what it is. It's just another day, and I think I've talked about myself long enough past thirteen minutes, fourteen minutes, so we're gonna get into this real talk. So if you have a real talk that you would like for me to discuss, meaning you got some tea you want to kick out some gossip, you need some advice or whatever, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line. Come on, focus. 
please make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that way that I do know it is a real talk video and if you want to change the names of anyone in your video or your email rather meaning their name is April their real name is April but you know that everybody in the world is gonna know it's you you can always say I've changed the names to such and such or you know you cannot say anything and I can just assume that you did or I can assume that you didn't and I'll change it for you or I won't change it so the choice is yours, but please put in the subject line of the video, of the email, excuse me, Real Talk. So that way when I go through my emails, all I have to do is put Real Talk in the search and it'll definitely come up. So on that note, um, let's get into this Real Talk. I do want to think, oh, it's downstairs, ding. Oh, I'm so mad. Um, but... I do want to thank everyone for the Christmas cards along with the gifts that I did get in my P.O. box. I also got this Wonder Woman tote bag in my P.O. box and it was in a yellow manila envelope and I'm so mad because I left it downstairs and I wanted to bring it upstairs just to say thank you but I totally left it downstairs. So subscriber diva, diva subscriber, you know who you are. I want to thank you so much for the Wonder Woman tote bag. That was the first and it was really cute and I've never seen one like that ever in my life and I have like loads of Wonder Woman things from everyone so I love my Wonder Woman collection because you guys know I'm a huge fan of Wonder Woman not because the movie just came out but because let's let's get let's let's be realistic bitches I'm 43 years old you know Wonder Woman was out when I was a kid okay I used to have on those one um underoos you know underoos that's what they called them and my freaking Wonder Woman things on my arm and the cape running around the goddamn house so I'm not like a huge fan of the Wonder Woman movie I really don't I mean it's a good movie don't get me wrong but I don't really care for the movie like that also if you guys remember Bionic Man Incredible Hulk I love those two but I was like the hugest Wonder Woman fan also this other show that I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about and don't laugh because I wish that I had I do I did have a couple of dresses like them because I love the show so much Little House on the Prairie you guys remember Little House on the Prairie Laura Ingalls and Nelly I loved Little House on the fucking Prairie that was like my show like when I say that was my show I watch that show religiously okay and I don't know I should I should try to look it up on the Android box I bet you it's there I loved that so so freaking much I like idolize them I love their living and I don't know why because if I had to live like that today I would probably fucking kill myself okay when even know black people back then like that you know what I'm saying so I'm saying but yes, I do have a lot of favorite shows as a kid. Not a lot, but enough to where you guys would be like, did you think he was white, bitch? I'm just saying. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get into this real talk. And I will see you guys on the other side. Huh? 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 What? Also, you guys, I just wanted to mention this, okay? So, like I was saying about TV shows, I know you guys have heard of that show, um, Supernatural. So, I watched that show, like, a long time ago. Like, when I say, like, a long time ago, I mean, like, back in the days when it first came out. So, I just, I didn't really watch it like that, but I just started watching it again. And, um, so, it's because, 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 because it has 13 seasons, and I like to have something to do. Why the fuck did I not eat? Well, I guess because he wasn't Negan back then. But when I watched the first season, did that motherfucking Negan um, have a role in the show? I mean, he did. I was so mad when I seen him. And you know what's so petty? I know I'm petty and I know that, you know, it's just a show. But when he died um, on season two, the first episode of season two, I was so fucking happy. I was like, finally, somebody got your ass, Negan. Finally. I know that's real petty, and I know he wasn't even Negan then, but, you know, I can always have faith. I, I just can't stand him. I just cannot stand him on The Walking Dead. Though he is one handsome motherfucker, okay? Back in the day, he wasn't that handsome. I don't know what it was. I think as some people get older, they just, you know, it's, <laughs> even with babies. Some babies be so fucking ugly when they're kids, and then when they get older, you be like, oh, God damn. Your motherfucking ass is fine as a motherfucker, okay? I'm just saying, I was just really happy about Negan's ass dying on um, 
yeah, on um, Supernatural. So I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. So anyway, let's get into this real talk before I just keep on talking. Okay, so here we go. Hey, April, love your videos and personality. My condolences about your dog, Coco. Such a beautiful dog, and I was crying right along with you when you shared your story of losing him on YT. Thank you for being so open and honest. You just don't know how much your videos help others. Let me make sure my mic is on, okay? So here's my dilemma. You can call me Morgan. So I've been with my boyfriend, Elijah, going on eight years in March, and we have a son together. We both also have a son each from previous relationships. We are both 33 years old. We met on Match.com and have been very happy for the most part. And when we first met, we both shared that we wanted to be in a long-term relationship and eventually get married. As time has passed, his views about marriage became more evident. He will say things like, why does the state have to be involved or determine our love for each other, etc. He looks at marriage like a business. His mother does not have the best views on marriage either. She once wanted to marry her boyfriend in a ceremony without it being legal. She's not the biggest fan of me simply because I'm with her son, whom is her only child. She says things like, you're the biggest girl he's ever dated. April, I'm 135 pounds. She also used to say it's no point in getting married at this point. She even introduced me as his friend at their family reunion three years ago. Elijah loves his mom, but even he knows she can be tough to deal with. She and I are cordial and I'm always respectful. I try not to let her get to me, but it's not hard. Anyway, enough about his mom. Elijah is an excellent father and the best boyfriend I could ask for. I feel that we make a great team in our relationship and with parenting also. He helps me with my special needs son more than his own biological father has. <clears throat> and has been a rock during many tough times for me. He's supportive, romantic, kind, and always level-headed. I'm on the other hand and very sensitive and passionate when we have arguments. I'll curse and say things that I don't... Wait, she said, I, on the other hand, am very sensitive and am passionate. When we, have when we have arguments, I'll curse and say things I don't mean, and he looks at those things as an attack on him. It hurts me. That, well, that didn't really sound right, because if she's passionate um, and sensitive when we have arguments, then you wouldn't curse and say things you don't mean. But I guess, you know, when you say things when you don't mean, because you just hurt. Um, it hurts me that we aren't married yet. He, ha he was raised in private school and a little privileged, and I'm educated but a little hood, so I don't hold back my feelings in regards to anything. Marriage is something that I value, and I want to spend the rest of my life with him, and he wants to spend his life with me, just without the marriage title. We have went to counseling, and I have expressed my resentment towards him due to us not being married. He even said he wants to compromise and get married, but I want him to marry me because he wants to, not as a compromise. He always says that I care about marriage too much and, and ask if I would rather have a good boyfriend or a bad husband because just because someone is a husband doesn't mean they're a good person. Do I settle for a good boyfriend or end things because he is unsure about marriage? And I want our relationship to grow beyond boyfriend and girlfriend. I try not to nag him, but the situation really bothers me and I think I have resentment towards him because of it. Please help. Thanks. I have attached a few pics of us. And they look so freaking cute, okay? Like, seriously. They look adorable together. Aww. Aww. They look so cute together. So, so, so cute. So, Morgan and Elijah have been together for eight years, and they both have sons, um, from previous relationships and they also have a son together which is great um, I think that's just great um, especially the fact that she says he's been her rock and he's also given her more support um, with her child her special needs child than the child's father and you know but in the beginning of the relationship he did want to get married and things like that but then I guess his outlook on marriage has changed a little bit which is unfortunate but you know 
things do, I'm going to use this color right here, toast. Things do ch change sometimes in relationships, which is, uh, no, I'm going to use the one which is so warm, actually. I'm going to use this one first, so warm, which is unfortunate. So also, besides his feelings towards marriage, his mother, which is kind of like to me a meddling nobody, a, a good for nothing meddling nobody. Well, I shouldn't call her a nobody, but just good for, good for nothing meddling ass, you know. She has a view on marriage as well. She wanted to get married to her own boyfriend, but in a ceremony that wasn't legal. However, I think like she said, her mo his mom's view on marriage and things like that is because that's her only child. And people do get really touchy and picky and iffy when it comes to their only children. However, she's also introduced Morgan as his friend three years ago at their family reunion. What motherfucking friend you had around for five years because that was, they've been in a relationship for eight now. So, you know, three years ago, they was in a relationship for five. And um, so you introduced her as a friend when I'm pretty sure she had a child with him at the time. Either way, it doesn't matter. They were together for five years prior to the relationship of, of the, um, the family reunion and you introduced her to the friend as a friend. But also what really kills me is her mother-in-law or her fake mother-in-law, well, that's what we're going to call her, the fake mother-in-law. Did she say that she is, um, that Morgan is the biggest girl that her son Elijah has ever dated? And Morgan is 135 pounds. So what has Elijah fucking dated? Anorexia people? Fucking skeletons? Has he fucking dated skeletons? Crackhead skeletons at that? 135 pounds is really not a lot of pounds. My daughter Nay is 15 and she weighs more than 135 pounds, okay? Um, honestly, I weigh 194 pounds and I wouldn't even want to weigh 135 pounds. I would feel like a crackhead. I, I know I would look like a fucking crackhead, okay? Because some people are just not built for that. But she looks damn good for her size. However, who the fuck are you to be telling somebody that, you know, you're the biggest that my son has ever dated. I think my snappy comeback would have been, and out of all the people I've dated, you're my, you're the um you're you're the one with the biggest fucking mouth. I think that would have been my snappy comeback. But I don't really like to disrespect my spouse's mother, you know what I'm saying? But I probably would have said something in reference to, and you have the biggest mouth that I've ever come across as well. You're very opinionated. But you know, unfortunately, that's how mother in laws are um are fake mother-in-laws. I call her fake mother-in-law because they're not married. Me per se, I'm not like that with my sons and their girlfriends or, you know, I don't, I don't, I just don't do things like that. I don't meddle because I just feel like I have my own place, meaning not my own place that I live in, but I have my own place where I should just mind my business. And that's, I think is like really important. Okay. As I was saying, but my memory card got full because I didn't clear it out. Um, as I was saying for me, I think like, like what I do for my sons is I mind my business. I just think that minding your business is always best, especially when you have children in their relationships. As long as you're not harming any of my children, then I feel like me to mind my business would be probably like the best thing for me to do. I'm going to take this color right here, which is called a blaze. Yes. Let's try this out. Um, but here's the thing. Marriage to some people is not really that important, which is unfortunate. Some people like to use marriage as they feel like if you're married to somebody, it'll make your relationship stronger. It'll make your relationship better. It'll bring you closer. You know what I mean? You'll have like this really great bond, etc., etc. And that's not true. Um, I will agree with him, her boyfriend, Elijah, on one thing, which is, would you rather have a good boyfriend or a bad husband. And he does have a point with that. Just because you're married to somebody does not necessarily mean that your relationship is going to be golden and it's going to be so great and it's not going to be any type of infidelities or lies or hurt or heartache or anything like that. Just because you're married does not mean that that is going to be the case. Sometimes, you know what I used to, honestly, I used to look at marriage even when I was married as it's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. And sometimes it would make me feel like, okay, why do I need this piece of paper to prove my love to this person or to prove what I am to this person? And that's how I would feel about it. But then there would be parts of me that would feel like, you know what, um, like right now, 
because we're no longer married, you know, I am divorced, but I still do call her my husband. Um, I feel like, you know, I do talk about it with him and he does talk about it with me. So I do feel like, you know, hey, maybe it would make us closer. I don't know. And it would make me feel, to me, it would make me feel like, okay, we have something special and et cetera, et cetera. But that doesn't go for everybody. That's not the case for every relationship. And I mean, if I had to choose between a really good boyfriend versus a bad husband, I would definitely choose the good boyfriend, or like the really good boyfriend. But sometimes people do need like that feeling or not even feeling, but they do need like that security to where they feel like, okay, we've got, I'm going to use brick that we've got like something going on that's really important or, you know, it just is a tie. Now who wouldn't want their child to feel like, okay, mommy and daddy are married. They've got like the perfect relationship. No relationship is perfect. Even if you've got the best boyfriend in the world, no relationship is perfect, which is unfortunate. I don't, I, I don't, I've never heard of any relationship that is perfect. There are a lot of people that feel like their parents' relationships might be really perfect and golden. And that's only because you have never seen or heard your parents argue or et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that, that, that goes to say just because you've never seen them argue or heard them argue and doesn't mean that their relationship has always been great. And then what comes to what happens is later on in life, those same parents who you've grown up with as kids and you're like, Oh, they were the best parents. They, um, they never argued, et cetera, et cetera. They get divorced and you're, you're like 25 and or 20 and they're getting divorced and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And they're like, well, we just stayed together for you guys. And you're like, what do you mean you guys just stayed together for us? Well, because we didn't want to break the family up and, you know, we wanted you guys to finish school and things like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes the shit backfires on you like that. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure. Well, no, I'm not pretty sure because that's not the case. Some women, not all women in the world want to get married and not all men want to get married. Eight years is a nice, decent amount of time for a relationship, you know, and I can understand totally um, that you may hold some resentment against Elijah because he kind of like went back on his word. Um, meaning he did say he wanted to marry you in the beginning and spend the rest of his life with you. And now he's, his whole thoughts, his whole thought pattern of being married is something totally not what it was in the beginning of the relationship. So I can understand the resentment because you built that not promise, but his thoughts of being together forever through papers as something that you can hold on to. Let me tell you something about that, Morgan. Men will tell you something and sell you a motherfucking dream. And that's unfortunate that that's how I'm going to put it. But there are people out in the world that sell everybody a motherfucking dream at a time in their lives. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not the nicest person in the world and I ain't the sweetest person and I'm not the most evil vindictive person neither. But, um, I have told guys in plenty of, not plenty of relationships, but in relationships in general, how I felt about them. Not meaning that I meant that shit because I really didn't, except for only one person, which is my husband. I, I think the world's of him. But sometimes people sell you fucking smoke and whistles or however you want to say that, a dream, because that's just what they want you to be, believe in the beginning. Now, when I say that, don't think that Elijah is like some type of you know, person that I'm going to use. Also, I'm using this color universal, which is really pretty right here. This color at the bottom, really pretty. This one right here. Um, now, honestly, I don't think that that was Elijah's intentions as to just sell you a smoke and whistles or a dream or anything like that. That I don't think he did. However, everybody is entitled to have a different opinion about things later on in life. Meaning we all change our mind about things. Okay. That's what life is about and we're entitled to that. But what I would say is I understand your resentment towards him because he did tell you something in the beginning and now his thought process of it is totally different. I get that. You know, everybody's entitled to change their mind. However, at least his whole thought process didn't change 100%. Meaning... He did say he wanted to get married, and then he changed his mind about that. 
that's okay. Like I said, he's entitled to feel that way. But he didn't say, oh, I don't want to get married to you right now. And I don't want to be devoted to you or just be with you. I'm going to be with you and other girls. He didn't say that. So that right there is a plus. Not even a plus, but he's still very respectful. And that still gives you like a chance, not even really a chance, but it still allows you that opportunity that maybe later on down the road, maybe next month, maybe a few months from now, maybe a year or so from now, his whole thought process of thinking he doesn't want to get married now will change. It seems like his mother is feeding him like this negative energy and he's feeding off of that, you know, like evil and good, evil versus bad or evil and good, or bad versus good, whatever you want to call it. He's kind of like feeding off of his mother's energy. And I get that because for one, he's an only child. And for two, she probably like drills him and drills him into feeling like marriage is not the best. Why even bother getting married? I can foresee that. I can definitely foresee her feeding him all of this negative energy about marriage and, you know, what he should do and, you know, things like that. I, I'm like definitely seeing her feeding him the negative fucking energy. But for people like her, um, for people like her, you know, I wouldn't really dwell on it like that. I really wouldn't like allow her to come in between the relationship that you have with your boyfriend. I hate when people keep fucking texting me. Okay. Like I'm ignoring your text message right now because I'm doing something. I don't give a fuck about anything else. But what the fuck I'm doing, okay? Anyway, so as I was saying, um, it is nice to be married. Don't get me wrong. It is like a really nice thing to be married. Trust me. But me, I have my own ups and downs in my own relationship, in my own marriage. And you guys know that because I share my life with you guys. Um, however... If I could change it, if I could have changed things in my relationship before getting divorced, I definitely would have. And I tried that and I did try. So let's remember that I did try to change things in my relationship. However, marriage isn't for everyone all the time, which kind of probably does suck. Okay. It's not always for everyone. But I also feel like when you have a man like you have, who has held you down and has been your rock and your stable peace of mind for all of this time with you and your own son together, along with your son that you said has special needs, you have to take a lot of things into consideration. Some women have husbands that don't even fucking do that shit, which is unfortunate. You know what I mean? Like some women have husbands who ain't shit and they have kids together and those husbands ain't shit. They don't even take care of those little kids with their wives. And you see them, they're like, oh, we've been married for like 10 years. And you're like, you still married to this nigga? And he don't even do shit for you or the kids? Like, I'm just saying, that's just how I feel. I would honestly, personally, rather have like a really good boyfriend versus a um, horrible husband. And you know what? I, I will say this, that... I guess I would say like right now I have like a really good boyfriend because in in all honesty that's what he is to me and that's what I mean he's he's that's what he is actually he's just like he you know my ex-husband is my boyfriend which sucks but hey I'd rather have that than have the relationship that we had a while ago but listen for one your mother-in-law She's a nosy jackass. Gonna spray this with some of this diamond setting spray from Passion Jones's line. Um, your mother is a nosy jackrabbit. Have you guys ever heard of that term? My grandfather used to say that all the time when I was a kid, along with the word jackass. But he was quick to sort of call somebody a jackrabbit. Those older people back then, they had like the best, the best freaking, um, you know, slogans, I guess. Or of sayings, whatever you want to call it. They did. They actually did. Um, I'm going to go into this color pure. Who am I to be sweating my brush on my daughter's palette? Pure. Right here. So, you know, I would rather have... 
the relationship that me and him, he, he and I had back then, it wasn't the best relationship. It really, really wasn't, you know. He would get drunk sometimes and get in trouble or go to jail for selling drugs and never listen to what I was telling him and think he knew everything. So those days, I'm glad that they're long gone. And he's He was able to, you know, mature and see like, you know, damn, she was right. And he resents it a lot now, you know, my ex-husband. Like, I wish I would have listened to you and been a better husband. You know, and I get that. I get that. Now, I don't say that to him because I was a good wife. And I put up with a lot of shit. I really did. But the one thing that I wish I wouldn't have done was divorce him. But you live and learn, you know? You live and learn. Now, do I resent the fact that we got divorced? Yeah, because that was my doing. That was definitely my doing. And I, and the reason why I did it is because I had resentment, which sucks. Because when you have resentment, it's temporarily sometimes. When you hold a grudge against somebody, it's temporarily sometimes. And then you look back at it and you're like, damn, I shouldn't have did that. I wish I would have never did it like that. Just like what I do right now. You know, so resentment isn't always something that'll last for a long time. But also, here's the thing. Don't allow that resentment, that evil that is going through your mind, fuck up a good thing that you have right now with him. You know, Elijah seems like a pretty decent guy. And like I said, everybody is definitely entitled to how they feel about anything. That's why they call them opinions. Everybody has an asshole just like everybody has a motherfucking opinion. Okay? So don't judge him on his opinion. Like, that's just like, okay, if you guys was in a relationship and he was a Muslim and you was a Jew, you can't get mad with him because his 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 moral values and his religious values aren't the same as yours. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just his life. That's how he was raised. And it seems like his mama has a lot to do with his feelings. Now, me personally, like I said, I don't like to be disrespectful to anybody's parents. But what I would tell her to do is stay out of our relationship in a nice way. You don't have to say, bitch, you need to mind your motherfucking business. That might be something you want to say, but I wouldn't do that if I were you. Only because, you know, she's, she's, you know, she's voicing her opinion about marriage and she's voicing her opinion. Her opinion might be a little bit too much, like your weight and size and, you know what I mean? And even her opinion towards your relationship might just be a little bit too much. Sometimes you have to put a halt to things and there's always a nice way of doing it. And my thing is this. You show them the nice way first. And if they can't get that shit, after a couple of times, not after one time, but after a couple of times, then you can bring the dogs out. You know who let the dogs out. Woo, woo. But do it in a nice way first, because that way that bitch can't be like, oh, you know, Elijah, your girlfriend is so rude. That's why you shouldn't marry her and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Do it in a nice way first. And that way, when you do it in a nice way, a first, second, even, you know, three times is a charm. You always give people like three chances. At least I do. I try to. Um, at least try to let her know in a nice way three times that her opinion is not needed. You know, meaning, you, can you mind your business a little bit? But you don't have to say it like that. Just say it in a nice way, you know? I don't know what you call her. If you call her Miss Elijah or whatever their last name is, you get the point. Just say it in a nice way first, and two times, and three times. And if she doesn't get it after the third time, well, here's what you do. The third time, the fourth time you tell her, you don't have to cuss at her, meaning call her all kind of bitches and stuff like that. That's one thing you don't have to do. But you can tell her a lot more sterner without using cuss words, you know, because you wouldn't want anybody to cuss at your mama. So don't cuss at his. But like I said, in a nice way, the first three times you tell her in a nice way, but in a stern, a stern, nice way. If she continues after the first three times, then the fourth time, you're going to have to tell her in a more forceful, stern way without using cuss words. 
And if that bitch continue, then girl, you're going to have to go off on him or his mama. Well, I really wouldn't want you to go off on Elijah, but I think a lot of the problems that you guys are having, and it's not even a problem, I just think a lot of his opinions come from his mother. Let me tell you something. I had that same issue with my ex-husband, but his mom has three kids. But here's the thing about those three kids. He's the only boy. And he was the middle child, and he is also the only boy. So it was kind of like I took away her only child because it was her only son. I didn't take him nowhere. He was right down the street. You could have came and seen him whenever you wanted to, which you, you fucking did. But it was seemed like it was just too much of constantly coming over or needing his help with stuff. And, you know, sometimes that gets in the way. And a lot of times it would irritate me, to be honest. It would, a lot of times it would irritate me. And, you know, she would come and she would say, you know, she would say sly things at the mouth to me. And when he wasn't around, like, you know, she would come over and she would want to borrow something or whatever. She would come over looking for him. He wasn't there. So she would say little smart things, little slide things. And a lot of it I held in for a very, very long time. I didn't say anything. I dealt with it. Only because, you know what? You keep getting smart with me and saying smart shit. That doesn't mean he's going no fucking where. So you can say whatever the fuck it is you want to say. I don't really care. You wasting your energy hating on me when I don't even care. And But after a while, between his mother and his sister, not his oldest sister because she um, lived in another state. But um, after a while, not even another state, in another part of New York, excuse me. But after a while, it does become really kind of like hard to deal with. And you get tired of that shit. You like literally get tired of the shit. And so I finally did go off. But it was like so built up and so built up. Like I told you guys that the, the, the went off was like the police were involved and you know what I mean? Like, so basically what I'm trying to say is don't try not to let it get to escalate to that part where you got the police involved. You know what I mean? Try not to let it escalate to where the police are involved. You know something? I really hate to put fucking eyeliner on. I do. You guys see this every week, how I struggle with doing eyeliner. Because my eyes are so freaking hooded. Um, I finally found something to go do with my eyes versus getting eye surgery. I know you, I was telling you guys. Um, it's a fillers. One of, the, um, one of my subscribers, my followers on Instagram, sent me this post. Girl, fillers is way more cheaper and they last um, a couple of years depending on how your body reacts. But you don't got to get cut neither. And I really want to get cut open. But I hate doing eyeliner because it's so hard for me to do my eyes. Because they're so hooded. Um, yeah. So, on that note, we're going to move on to the next. Morgan, my key word to you is don't let the marriage thoughts get to you, okay? Because for one, I'm not going to say it's not all it's cracked up to be, but I am going to say this. you got a very good boyfriend, and he makes sure that you and your children are great, and you have never said anything about him being disrespectful towards you or your children, okay? And... You know, that's just his thoughts for right now. You know, he was at, he was all for it in the beginning and you didn't say anything changed his mind. You just said that, you know, over time, basically he's changed his mind. I don't think it has anything to do with time. I think it has to do with his meddling mother, his meddling mother. Okay. That's what I should call this video. His meddling ass mother. Um, so I would just... Don't pressure him because people don't like to be pressured. You know, it's like a pipe. After you keep fucking with a pipe, it just, it'll burst after a while. So I wouldn't keep pressuring him into it. And I definitely wouldn't argue with him into it. Just give him a moment. Give him some breathing space. You know, talk about it with him. Sometimes, instead of us being so, like, 
Sometimes we attack. We are on like attack mode. You know what I'm saying? You ever notice that sometimes we'll get on attack mode because when we want something, we want it and we want it then and then. And if we don't get it, we kind of get upset. And then we go, we, our reaction is so abrupt and it's just like, so like, ah, oh. we get in, we get in attack mode and then that person gets in defense mode. And so I understand that he's very, you're very sensitive and emotional. You say things that you don't want to say, which are not really, you don't mean. And I get that because I'm like that too. I get really upset and I get sensitive and I, my feelings get hurt really easy, especially if it's concerning someone that I really do care about. But sometimes we go about things because we're so sensitive that we take it as an attack on us or on our character or, or on our heart. And then, then we get into attack mode and we start kind of like verbally abusing that person or kind of like going at them in the wrong way. And that kind of like puts a person off or sets a person aside. We don't want to be so abrupt like that or aggressive. And I know that's hard for a lot of us. I know it's definitely hard for me. Um, and I have, you know, my chill factor now is if I can't be... Um, on a civil conversation with you, meaning my husband, then I kind of like hang up on him and I'll just be like, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later. That's just what I do. Instead of carrying on the conversation and arguing with him, I just won't do that. But I really do think like, if you are really concerned about being married like that, then I think that your first thing you should do is have this conversation with him about why you feel that way. What? Why is it so valid to you? And I'm not knocking you for feeling that way. Honestly, I'm not because everyone loves marriage. Not everyone, but some things are good for some, some things are not. But I feel like if you guys have discussed this already in the past, like a real discussion, then what's so hard about discussing it now? You know what I mean? You guys are both adults. You're 30 in your 30s. You have children together. It's nothing wrong with discussing discussing things and please discuss it without his mother and then also what I feel like you really need to do is you need to tell him or you need to have a conversation with him about his mother and her ways and her meddling and find out if his reasons of not wanting to get married right now at this time has anything to do with his mama because I feel like it does so moving on to the next one that you guys know before I even start I have some you know Come on now. You guys, come on and focus. I hate when things don't focus. Okay, there we go. You guys know I love those leggings from Target, right? So I went there the other day again. Yes, I know, again, to get another pair. Because I had told you guys that I gave Tati a pair, my largest. So that kind of like put me down with one, the brand new pair. So I went to this other Target. Please tell me why they had like three pair left and they was not my size. I was so mad, okay? I would have even tried to squeeze my fat ass into a medium. Anyway, I got the next ones. Now tell me what you guys think of these ones. Can you guys even see that? These are the ones that tie up. On the, they tie up. I kind of like them and then I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to break myself out of being like, you know, wearing the same shit all the time. But if I like what I like, then I like. And my shirt, my crop top, my tie-dye crop top, well, Rue 21 got 50% off of clearance prices, which is great. I love clearance prices. So, yes. Um, trying to see where this email is at. Okay. Why is she so damn sad? My best friend Shay is like, I'm so damn sad. I guess it has to do with the fucking Bath and Body Works stuff. Because she's sending me pictures of stuff. And I bet you she's going to say that she's sad because... She feels like she didn't get a lot of stuff. And I don't even, I ain't even trying to hear her with that bullshit. Because she's got like 70 candles already. Anyway. Okay. She's giving me a run for my money. Okay. This one, I feel like, is a good one. She, first of all, she is so cute. Second of all, um, the evidence is real. Okay? Let's get into this. Hey, April. I hope you're doing well. And I'm so happy that you're feeling better on the behave, um, on the, um, behave of Coco. I'm not really sure what the behave means. It's probably like a misspell. Um, I really wanted to know that you're not, I really wanted you to know that you're not alone and I'm here with you. 
you might have noticed that I have a new email address than before, which is a little different from my old one, which is the reason I sent you this real talk. The names have been changed. You can call me Leah. Now I'm going to give you some background about my family, particularly with my sisters. I am not really close with them like that, especially my older sister, because I was just never comfortable. And mind you, she's 20 plus years older than me and she's old school. So I never really felt like we had the best friend bond with each other. And she tends to get out of line and act like she's my mother and that's not okay. And we've had our issues with each other and I don't really like the type of person she's come off as because I know things can go extremely left between us which it did before sorry about that guys um and it can go extremely left between us which it has done before so my oldest sister which which the name has been changed to stephanie has gotten me a new phone which was the galaxy 6 galaxy s6 which was two years ago if i'm not mistaken and we had shared a plan but she was the owner of the plan we had together Fast forward, the contract had ended this month, which was on the 6th of December, and my phone was a lease phone, so therefore I had the I had the I had given the phone back to her. Never heard of a lease phone. Now I have an iPhone that my boyfriend had got me, and now I'm on his plan. Two days ago, Stephanie hits me up asking me about information that's referenced to one of my emails, and I didn't really think at first when I seen the text. She asked me, did I get the information from Drybar? I told her yes. It didn't really cross my mind to think that she's seen my emails. Then she goes, word of advice, you need to be more careful, more careful, more careful with what sends through your email because you never know who can use that against you, especially if your face is exposed. Yet again, I said, okay, thank you for telling me. After that, she's like, oh, I've seen all of your business with my emails and how I had emails from two years ago. So I'm thinking like, why the fuck is she going in my emails? What the fuck? What really pissed me off was that she was able to track the websites that I've been on and that was porn websites. Yeah, because apparently my old Gmail email account was still open and I didn't completely sign out from the device itself. So I guess that's how she was able to see it. Yes, I'm not going to lie. I would watch that on my phone, but then I stopped because I also have a tablet as well, but it was also connected to my Gmail account. And she had seen that as well. And she goes, oh, what would your mother or father think about it? After that, I didn't say anything to her. I was so embarrassed and stunned that I couldn't understand why she couldn't just inform me and stay um, and say, look, I happened to see your emails and I just wanted to delete it and I just delete them. But the way she fucking went about it was dead ass not cool by her questioning me and shit. And, and, okay, wait. But the way she fucking went about it was dead ass not cool by her questioning me and shit and what I watched about what I watched. First of all, I am 20 years old, therefore I'm an adult. So it's really none of her business to be asking me why I'm watching something for my own pleasure. Like, who cares? That's how I felt and I almost feel like my privacy was invaded in a way. I've been really stressed and pissed about this whole situation. And when it happened, that was the same day that she had to return the phone. So it was it all made sense. I even had the proof that her phone was logged into my old Gmail account. I immediately changed my password. Matter of fact, I've deleted the account and made a new one, which is why you see a new one that I have emailed you from. I felt stupid for forgetting or not thinking to put my old phone to factory data reset. It's something like that, you know, which it is. Before I gave her the phone back, I thought that I've done everything as far as deleting what I wanted to delete and switched my contacts and stuff onto my new phone that I have. My question is, how do you feel about this whole situation? I'm, am I wrong for feeling the way I feel and how do you think I should go about the situation? I just want closure and to forget about it, but not what she did. And I definitely have the proof that her nosy ass was in all of my damn emails. Ain't no telling what else she could have seen that she just didn't tell me. She probably could tell that I don't trust her with my business nor my personal life at all. The whole thing of her finding out that um, I've been watching porn is the last thing I want her to know. I would really appreciate your help. I'm so sorry that this real talk was long, but I thank you for taking the time out of your day to read this. Okay, so basically Leah... And her older sister, Stephanie, you know, they did share a plan. They started a plan, of a phone plan two years ago. And the contract ended this six, December 6th, okay? So Leah had to give back the phone. I never knew you could lease a phone. I never knew that.
I just thought, you know what I'm saying? You get the phone and you get the phone. But so she gave the phone back and her sister, who's Stephanie, is 20 years older than her. Now, she don't really fuck with her sister like that. They don't really rock with each other. Just because for the simple fact is, for one, her sister is 20 years older than she is. For two, her sister acts like she's somebody's damn mother. And for three, it's just all of the above, okay? Which is cool. There's no really no big bond like that. She is like 20 years different. So, I mean, like, you know, you do have families where the, the, the siblings are like way older than the youngest or whatever, especially when there's a lot of them involved and so forth. And, you know, their relationship is just not the same as somebody who would be more close in age. But they ended the contract. Leah went and got an iPhone with her boyfriend's plan and she gave the phone back to Stephanie to return back to the phone store. Now, mind you, Stephanie's nosy ass and went all through the phone and was going all through motherfucking Leah's emails. Now she knows and she found out that Leah watches porn. And now she's questioning her, why are you watching what you watch? You think your mother and father would approve of that? How do you think that makes them feel? Why are you watching that? And et cetera, et cetera. And just questioning her about who she sends shit to, pictures to, whatever. Now, Leah kind of did fuck up because she forgot to send her phone to factory. However, you would feel like this, like, well, that's my sister. Why would you want to go through my shit? So you don't really think of people that, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I don't even know where my mind was because my freaking son going to call me. First, he's going to text me. Wuzzle. He don't got no driver's license. He already had my Tahoe towed, okay? He already had that towed, okay? And whatever. Now you keep asking me about using my other car. Well, my friend's got a license. No, because I let you use something one time and you think that it's going to constantly be like, no, nah, you're not going to keep asking me about my goddamn car. No, no. So anyway, so as I was saying, like, so Leah, she forgot to set her phone to factory reset, which, you know, I can understand that it might have happened. I just gave Wuzzle my Galaxy 7 because he broke his and all the blue ink went to it. And so what did I do? I freaking almost gave it to him without factory reset. But he factory reset it right in front of me. Because, you know something? I don't need you to know which websites I be viewing on my motherfucking phone, too. We grown. And like uh, like she said, that's her sister. They 20 years different, okay? She she probably do actually feel like she's somebody mother because she's 20 years older. Me and my mom are 20 years different. So she is actually old enough to be her mother. However, she ain't her motherfucking mother. And my thing is this. That's real motherfucking nosy. Now, it's one thing to be nosy. When you be nosy, you don't be fucking nosy and and fucking opinionated about people shit. When you be nosy, you just be nosy. You don't even supposed to let people know that you nosy like that. That's that's what I'm talking about. Like when you peeping out of the window, watching people, you don't supposed to let nobody know that you peeping out of the window and you watching them. You're not supposed to let people know that. You're not supp if you want to be nosy and go through people shit, you're not supposed to let them know that you went through their shit, okay? So that's basically what her sister did. Now, first of all, why is you so mad about somebody watching porn? Why is her sister mad about that shit? Let's be honest. Who don't fucking watch porn? I watch the motherfucking porn, okay? I got enough of them saved motherfucking websites on my goddamn Google account to where whenever I want to watch one, I got my own favorites that I like to watch. However, I ain't ashamed to admit the shit because we grown. I'm 43 years old. We grown. You know what I'm saying? We watch what the fuck we want to watch. It's You know what I'm saying? However, I ain't, got about, I ain't about to explain myself to nobody about why the fuck I watch them or what would my mother and father think about the shit my fucking snappy comeback would have probably been like well shit maybe they watching this shit too maybe if you watch some motherfucking porn and get some dick you wouldn't be so uptight about the shit obviously her sister ain't getting no dick because if she was she would definitely not be all up in somebody else's business when you have that much motherfucking time on your hand that means you don't have a life of your own okay that's the whole motherfucking problem or the fact that you have that much time on your hand and you worried about what somebody else the fuck is doing like you the morale police the moral police is when you don't have a fucking life and you need to find one and catch yourself a new bus ride to fucking find you something else to do bill okay for real like when you have people that's that motherfucking nosy sister mother father brother whatever that means you don't have a life and you need to find something to do with your own now me personally had she kept motherfucking asking me that shit i probably would have went off on her and been like listen 
Do you think that you are a little bit too nosy in my shit? Let me tell you something, Leah. That's your sister, not your motherfucking mother. And even if it was your mom and she asked you, why are you watching porn websites? I would have had to let her know because I'm grown and that's what I like to do. And it's because it's available for people who want to watch it. You don't have to be in a relationship or a non-relationship to watch porn. If you grown, you can watch that motherfucking shit, okay? If you like watching dick and pussy, you can watch that motherfucking shit. Why should you have to explain yourself to anybody of why you like to watch people getting it the fuck on? That's not your motherfucking business or your place. Now, your sister Stephanie, she needs to find a place of her own, meaning have a seat, bitch. And mind your fucking business. Now, y'all is just siblings. Y'all ain't mother and father, brother. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She's not your mama. But I think because, you know what I'm saying? You, it's not like you allow her. But I think because you really don't say anything to her. And you're just like, okay, okay, you appease her. That's the reason why she feels like she could just keep on talking shit. And just keep on saying things to you. And plus, she feels like she's 20 years older. Let me tell you something. Everybody gets a time and a place to be put in a fucking place, all right? Meaning, just because that's your motherfucking sister and just because she's 20 years older don't mean that she could disrespect you and say whatever the fuck it is she wants to say to you. Let me tell you something. I'm an older sister. I ain't 20 years older, but I tell you what. I don't be in my brother's business like that. Because that's his fucking business. If he want to watch porn, then that's what the fuck he wants to do. If he want to ice skate around the town with some jock shorts on, then that's what the fuck he want to do. I'm not saying he would do that. And I'm pretty sure if he did, all the girls would love it. Okay? We already know that Corey Furman is a hot commodity. But I'm saying, um, your sister is a bit fucking nosy. A bit motherfucking nosy. And me personally... You got a lot of patience. Because me, girl, I would have been went the fuck off of her nosy ass and asked her, why the fuck is you worried about what the hell I'm watching? And why the fuck should you be embarrassed also, Leah? I would never be embarrassed about watching no motherfucking porn or skating around town in my fucking gym shorts or whatever the fuck I do. I wouldn't be embarrassed. The only thing I probably would be embarrassed about is falling in front of a bunch of people. That I probably would be embarrassed about or being drunk and falling in front of a bunch of people. That I would definitely be embarrassed about. Never have I done that, but I would just definitely be embarrassed. I just don't like to fall. Okay, and I just think like falling is so embarrassing because people be like, oh my God, are you all right? And they all look at you, but deep down inside, they're laughing at you. That's just how I feel about it. But let me tell you something. Don't sit up there explaining yourself to her of why you like to watch what the fuck you like to watch. And you also, this is one thing. Don't let her fucking ridicule you by saying, what the hell would your mother and father think about you watching the shit? What the fuck? Is she going to go telling their business about what you watch? Or she's like, oh, guess what, mommy and daddy? I brought the phone back to the store to Sprint or whatever store y'all got it from. And I seen on Leah's account. I went through her Gmail account. Key motherfucking word. I went through Leah's Gmail account and I seen that she was watching porn. Now, you know what's so crazy about the shit? She didn't just go through your motherfucking email. Because you can't go through somebody's email to see that they're watching porn. She went through your Gmail Google account. And went to your favorites and all the websites that you visited. So the bitch took being nosy to a whole different fucking level. Okay? That bitch is a motherfucking spy. All right? And she's a fucking nosy ass. Get your life, bitch. Get your motherfucking life, bitch spy. Now, this is what I would do for her. Definitely for her. I would hit her up and let her know, don't you ever in your life go through any of my shit again, okay? I don't have to explain anything to you because I'm grown and I like to watch what the fuck I like to watch. And I don't have to explain it to you or to my mother and father. Now, if you're watching, if you ain't watching shit where you are molesting people raping people or killing people or threatening the world whose fucking business is it of hers okay 
And that's what the fuck you need to tell her. And you also need to tell her, you're not my goddamn mother. You damn sure ain't my father. You are my sister. And that's all there is to it. I'm grown. Just because we're 20 years apart does not make you the authority or the boss over me. So what you need to do is go have a seat, Stephanie. Maybe watch some porn because it's good for you. And it'll release some fucking unneeded tension. And it'll make you feel better. And mind your own fucking neck. I know I be telling bitches all the time, mind your neck. Please mind your neck. When you don't mind your fucking neck, that's when all the problems begin. Like, seriously. You need to have a heart-to-heart -heart with your sister. When I say heart-to-heart, -heart, don't be sitting there being all nice. Because that bitch done really violated you. She done violated you. I hate when there's nosy people. Like, you know what? Did I ever tell y'all that time? Like, okay, there's nose. There's all different types of levels to nosy. And that shit that your sister did was not levels to nosiness. That's just like, bitch, I need a life. But nosiness, it's got levels to it. So I never forget the time I was getting my Tahoe towed out of my out of my garage because I needed to get it fixed. And there was two flat tires. So, of course, I couldn't drive it there. So I had to pay for the towing service. All right. Cool. Whatever. So you never seen the car parked on the street because, like I said, it was in my garage. So I go and I have the towing service come in like two houses away, exactly two houses away. This old white lady, she's 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 standing out her doorway, like in her driveway, peeking over like you can see her peeking over as they're putting the chains on my truck and, t and pulling it out. Like, it looked like it was getting repo, but let's be honest. The car, this was like two years ago. The car was from 1999. It was a Tahoe from 1999. That shit was not being repo. It did not take me that long to pay for the shit. I, did, I even bought it used, so I didn't even owe money on it, okay? And it had New York plates on it. But anyway, so she's watching them, and she's being real nosy. When I say nosy, I'm like being real motherfucking nosy. To the point where I was looking at her, even the tow guy, he was like, damn, you got some nosy neighbors. And I was like, what? And he, he's the one who pointed it out. And I was like, oh, wow. He was like, do you know her? And I was like, I don't speak to these people over here. Because I don't. I don't speak to any of them over here. Not saying that I'm better than them, but they just don't speak to me. And I'm not going to go out of my way and force you to say anything to me. Like, if you don't want to speak to a bitch, then... By all means, don't speak to a bitch. I don't feel no sir. I'm not going to lose no motherfucking sleep over it. Okay? So, I didn't say anything to her about her peeking over through the garage until the bitch came at the end of my driveway. Meaning, she walked her old ass all the way. I was about to say her old white ass. Okay? Cause, but keep in mind, I'm not prejudiced. Okay? I'm not a racist. So, I don't give a fuck what color you are. I'd have, if she was black, I'd have been like, she walked her old black ass. Okay? So, she walked her old white ass to the end of my driveway and stood there watching. Okay? So, I looked at the, I looked at the tow guy. And when I say old, she was probably like late 60s or whatever. I looked at the tow guy and he looked at me and I was like, I did like that. And then I looked at her and I was like, hi, how you doing? She just was like, hi, and didn't say anything. I was like, is there anything I can do for you? You need help? She was like, no. So why the fuck is you standing here then for? I didn't say why the fuck is you, but I was like, okay, because you're standing here. Oh, I was just seeing what they were doing. No, bitch, you were being fucking nosy. That's what I'm calling, that's what I'm talking about when there's levels to nosiness. Some motherfucking people feel like their nosiness is okay and they can just be motherfucking nosy all they want. It doesn't matter. They're just going to be all kinds of nosiness, which sucks. Okay? There's levels to this shit. And for one, me, I'm not nosy like that because let me tell you something. I don't give a fuck what you do. As long as you don't fuck with me and mine's, I hurt me and mine's, bitch, you could, you could jump off your motherfucking roof next door into your fucking pool. I don't give a fuck. As long as you don't ruin nothing of mine's on this side of town, then I'm good. I'm good money. I could care less about what the fuck you do with your time in your spare time. But being nosy like that is one fucking thing. And it's one thing to be nosy. If you be nosy, just be nosy. Don't let nobody know that you fucking nosy and you snooping the fuck around. But your sister, Stephanie, 
She's nosy. She's fucking nosy and she doesn't have a life. And that's all different types of nosy that I really just don't even fuck with. So my opinion to you would be to let her know you need to mind your motherfucking business for real. Okay? Mind your motherfucking business. Because there's no reason to be that motherfucking nosy. I'm just saying. What would, what would y'all do? And as far as explaining myself to somebody or why I like to watch porn... I'm not about to sit up there and explain that shit to nobody. Just like I'm not about to sit up here and explain it to you guys. Like my explanation of why I watch it is because I'm grown and I like to watch the shit and I'm grown and I watch whatever the fuck it is I want to watch because I'm grown and that's me and that's what I like to motherfucking do. Why the fuck do you do what the fuck you do? So I wouldn't, honey, don't explain to that bitch why you like to watch porn. Don't, don't. Just explain to her a why the fuck you not going to be allowing her to be in your goddamn business anymore. That's what you explain to her. And you tell her to mind her fucking business. Go sit her old ass down some fucking way and worry about why she ain't getting no dick and what the fuck is best for her. I'm just saying. So now... We go into, and I want to make sure that I cover every fucking email, every fucking um, question that she asked me. And she's so cute, too. And your real talk was not long at all. She, she's so cute, and she sure did put the proof of her nosy-ass sister, like... That's a shame. I hate for people to go through my shit. Like, seriously, I don't like for people to go through my shit at all. Like, that just is like a huge invasion of my privacy. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm not ashamed of what I like to watch or anything like that, I just feel like that's like a huge invasion of my privacy. And like, I don't, I don't like stuff like that. Like, on some real shit. I don't, I don't like stuff like that because then you feel like you can't trust the person. You know what I mean? When you start going through my things, I just, I don't like that shit. It makes me feel really violated. And also it makes me feel like if you're questioning me about my character, about what I like to watch, I can only imagine what you think of me as a person. Not like it would really matter to me because who gives a fuck? But if you're saying to me, like, what would mom and dad feel or what would they think? then that means that you're discussing my business. I'm pretty sure your sister has got a big fucking mouth next to the fact that she's that motherfucking nosy. So I'm pretty sure she's said something to somebody about it. Whether it be some family member or one of her close friends, she'd be running her mouth. I can tell she runs her mouth because just for the fact that she's nosy like that and she's blatantly nosy like that and has no, no problem, like, damn. I would never let nobody know I was that motherfucking nosy, but... I don't know. Okay, so today's video, we're going to use 24 Glow by Glownista, which is by Passion Jones. I showed you guys this last week in a video. I did some swatches, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out because her highlights are like so pigmented and really inexpensive. When I say inexpensive, they're very, they're loose, but they're only $10, which is great. Just four colors in the collection. And I did say that she should call the one of the new collections. Well, I don't know. I don't know if she's coming out with a new one, but I'm just saying, just in case she was, you know, she should call that shit reflections because shit, I'm going light handed with this because I, I really don't want to go too heavy handed because it gets really, really powerful. This stuff gets really, really powerful. Like seriously. Now that's light handed because I don't want to look like a reflection and then bitches be driving by and walking by and they be like, oh, stopping me to look at their makeup in my face and stuff. And I just be like, it's, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So, yes. But I think she should call the next ones Reflections and Mirror and all that shit because the shit is like, you know, this is some good, this is some good affordable highlight. Like, for real, you could spend like a bunch on like Becca and your freaking highlight will not look like this. Trust me, I got enough of her shit that I know. Um, Not enough, but I got enough of her fucking highlights that I know that the only good one that Becca does have is Champagne Pop. 
That one's the only one that fucking pop. The rest of them shits is a flop. They not really a flop, but shit, they ain't like all that neither. I'm just saying, I ain't trying to bash Becca, but for the price, I'm going to need that shit to really come through. But Passion Jones, you know, she's passionate about what the fuck she puts out there. So I don't know why my camera keeps doing that shit, but it's starting to piss me off. But that's why I like her highlight. And I also like this one too, which is by Saint Laurent and shit. Now, so make sure you check out Passion's site if you need some good highlight. I like this palette, it's really nice. It seems like I always do the same eye look, but it is what it is. So next video, next real talk, Okay. Real talk. He got married and did not tell me. Hey, April, in case names are needed, I have already changed them, but let's get to the story because I would love your view and your audience's view. I was talking to this guy who I've known for years. This time around, I thought maybe he could be, we could be serious as we were both older. When we met, I was 18 and he was 26. When we reconnected, I was 25 and he was 33. Things went good for about three months. We were just hanging out with the idea that being exclusive was coming. One day, I got on social media and see this Negro has moved to another the state and did not tell me he was on the bus to the new state when I found out when confronted he he said he did not know how to tell me but the more time was went it has went on the more I realized that was bullshit we still kept in contact and started going through things in his new thing in his new state I was there for him emotionally and reminding him to never give up. He was supposed to move back home, but he ended up not, which bummed me out. We agreed that we would be together and build a life when he moved back home, but like I said, it never happened. But deep down, he made me feel so good and talked a good game. I thought about moving to where he was, and he knew these things and knew how I felt. We had this long talk about how we are going to always be in each other's lives, me coming to visit him and how we going and how we would not lose contact for years again. So to get to the point, I really do believe that women intuition is real because I had no signs, but I had a feeling that he was dating his baby's mother again. Turns out they got married. She moved to where he was and he deleted his Facebook. We had no other contact because he had recently broken his phone. The crazy thing is I figured out the exact day he got married and I actually talked to him. I asked how he was doing since he had been going through things and his reply was, he ain't dead yet, just trying to make it. So of course I tried to encourage him, but he failed to mention that he had got married today, that day. I'm really writing because I don't know how I feel. It's not a heartbreak, but I feel so fucking angry and stupid. A couple of days before I even found out all of this, I started thinking maybe I would go visit him since he lives somewhere I always wanted to visit. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel. I even have the right to be, or, or do I even have the right to be angry at a man that was not even mine? This is the second time he has come into my life and threw me to the side when he was better or he has found better. I was the fool for believing things would be different again. I wish I could stop thinking about him, especially knowing that he is not even thinking about me at all. On top of all of that, my confidence is just really lacking lately, and he always knew how to make me feel special. I know one day I will not even care about this, but today I am so fucking angry for being stupid. I honestly think we would have never worked regardless of what I did because he would always see me as the little 18-year-old girl he met years prior. I also feel like how can I be mad at someone for choosing someone they shared a kid with and has put years into things with him over me. The same person you assured me you were done with and I did not have to worry about. You went and married. Well, damn. So did she change her name? She said the names have changed, but she didn't even mention any names as far as I'm concerned. So let me go get my wig because, you know, I'm about to put my wig on now and shit. Y'all do not go to that sale. Let me tell y'all, it is so fucking hot in my room. Like, seriously, it's hot in here and it's cold outside. But my room always seems to be so fucking hot. And I really know that it's not these lights that I'm sitting in front of. But I know it has to do with the sun that is always hitting in the back right here by my, my room. And I got blackout curtains and everything. And it just be so fucking hot in here. Like... To the point where it's like 
piss you off hot. Like, you ever had that piss you off hot? Like, I'm so fucking hot that I'm pissed the fuck off. That's that's really how I feel right now. Piss the fuck off from the heat and shit. We're going to call her... We gonna, I don't know what to call her. We're going to just call her um, Lena. Oh, not Lena. I don't really like that name. Um, what should we call her? We're going to just call her Gabby. Gabby is pissed the fuck off because Mike, someone who she was dating when she was 18, you know, they got back in touch with each other, yada, 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 and, you know, he never told her he was moving away to a new town, but once she found out, they decided to keep in touch. And they did, and they made all these little plans, you know, of how they was going to share their life together. They weren't going to go um, unconnected again like the last time. And, you know, they were going to be together, and he was supposed to move back home, et cetera, et cetera. But he never did, which bummed her out because she was so looking forward to him moving back to their hometown after he didn't already moved away without her knowledge, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. They worked through that, and first of all, if that were me, I would be kind of pissed off because how you going to move out of town and not tell me and then say you didn't know which, how to tell somebody? Like, who does some shit like that? Like, that would make me feel like all types of sneaky this. Like, okay, if you can do that, like, you can sneak off and get and move out of town on a motherfucker, then I can only imagine what else you could do. Like, you know what I'm saying? That right there is real low down. But, you know, it is what it is, people... Everybody is different. Maybe he didn't know how to tell her. I don't even know. However, I do know this. I would have been very upset if my boyfriend, who we, I was trying to work something out with, decided to move out of town on me and not share that with me after we have been sharing so many things with one another. So you can share a bunch of other shit with me, but you can't tell me when your ass is leaving town and moving out on me. What sense does that make? I don't, I don't know, but let me tell you this much. I guess because I have been through so many um, things in life, not even so many relationships, but, you know, I, I've, I've had my share of relationships, too. But I guess because I have been through so many things in life in general that I don't I don't allow, like, people or men to dictate how I feel like that anymore. You know what I mean? Like, there would be a time when I would just allow my feelings to definitely take control of the situation and definitely get in my feelings which would suck because when you get in your feelings about people, it makes things so hard for you as a person, meaning I, I wouldn't know how to focus, okay? And sometimes I get like that now when it comes to me and my ex, you know what I mean? Because we have been through so much together. So it's like if he don't answer my call, sometimes I, I've noticed myself getting in my feelings about that, like getting upset or whatever or you know, feeling some type of way, like, oh, I felt stupid, or how dare he not answer my call, and then I get upset, and I don't really like that feeling, because then I feel like I'm vulnerable, you know what I mean, so I think, like, for me, I'm able to kind of, like, not allow myself to be so vulnerable as I used to be only because I've already been through enough shit so I I'm, I just don't like to be taken advantage of and I definitely don't like to be feel I, I don't I definitely don't like to feel like I'm a fool with anybody in any relationship so but I can definitely understand where she's coming from about the fact that she feels stupid and she feels like a fool first of all I really can't tell you don't feel stupid and don't feel like a fool because we've all been there. I've been there. I felt like that many a times, plenty of times I put myself into situations and I've said I'm not going to put myself in that situation or I'm not going to allow that to happen to me. And um, it has. It, it has again and again and again. And I think after a while, you just get so numb to a lot of things that you just don't allow a lot of things to kind of like penetrate your shell. You understand what I'm saying? So 
I wouldn't feel so stupid about it if I were you. Um, my friend, she feels like that. My friend Devin, she felt like that when she took her ex-husband back. You know, they went and got divorced and stuff. And I shouldn't even be telling you her business, but I'm just going to use it as an example. Um, she felt like that when she took her ex back as well. However, she had to put him back out and she felt stupid, you know, because of the things that he's he's done to her in the past. And she's like, why would I even be bothered with him again? I should have known better. I'm so stupid. And I gave him everything. And I had to let her know, like, you know something? We as people, if we give somebody our all or we give them our heart and it's unconditional and they do us dirty, but we haven't done anything but been kind to that person. Why should we be the ones that feel stupid? I guess it's just because of lack of us feeling like, damn, we shouldn't have did anything. However, you or me, we, we really shouldn't feel stupid for doing anything for anyone. They're the ones that should feel stupid because in reality, you guys just lost out on a good thing. You the ones that, you know, took advantage of us as people. And it doesn't necessarily mean have to mean advantage as in you used us for money or clothes or whatever or fame. You just used us in general. And here it is now, you done moved along. I wouldn't really feel stupid if I were you, um, Gabby. I wouldn't. I would just feel like a human being because that's what you were. And that's what you are. Excuse me. You're a human being. You know what I mean? You cared about him and you showed him love and trust because you're a human being that's only right that's what people do but when there are people like him that aren't really appreciative to it or he's scheming and scamming and doing things behind your back and he has a, a second life or a hidden life that's on him it's always the word karma and it's always going to bite someone in the ass especially when they do dirty and do wrong to people and I know it's hard in the beginning, like you don't want to get over it. It's not even that you don't want to get over it, you do, but you feel like you're constantly thinking about this person and this person has made you feel this type of way towards them and towards yourself. And that's what's made you feel like stupid. And you want to forget about it right then and there. Honey, it's not that easy to forget about something that has hurt your feelings, okay? It doesn't have to be heartache. It doesn't have to be. But you're a human being and you have feelings. This is the same thing that I've been telling my friend Devin. She's like, I just want to get over it. I'm mad and I, I don't. And I had to explain to her, you're a human being. Even if you don't care about the person like that, you still have feelings and you're entitled to that. And as nice as you treat someone and then when they just dog you out, that kind of like fucks with your feelings and your emotions. And you know something? When you say things like, oh, why would he give up something with someone else who he's had a child with for you? That don't belittle yourself for somebody who's not even worth it. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that his baby mother is not worth it, that he's married her. But saying this he did that to you don't feel like you're not worth it because of her or because they have a child together never feel that way you know what I'm saying and don't belittle yourself because of him and what he's done to you that's his loss you never know his relationship with his baby mother may not be that great but I tell you what though I would never look back on, on the moment as in damn shoulda woulda could have what I would use this entire relationship that you guys had with each other because you said the man was not yours I would use it as just a learning tool you know what I'm saying don't sit around and sulk about it but just use it as a learning tool and just move on past it just like the way he's fucking moved on but I definitely wouldn't sulk in it and I definitely wouldn't put myself down as saying oh well she's better than me or who am I to be upset because that's his baby's mother and shit like that like fuck that bitch okay even though she probably didn't even know anything about you fuck her fuck that nigga too okay let me tell you something when you like somebody really hard or you love them and you have feelings for them it's not something that goes away right away especially if you're a genuine person and you're not full of shit you know what I'm saying? So, yes, granted, you guys did like each other. And I can't really understand why you said the guy was not yours, the man wasn't yours. If you guys were talking about building a life together and being together and visiting one another and all of that shit, then y'all had something. And he was yours, okay? It might have been a long-distance relationship, but y'all was in something together. Y'all had something together, point blank, period. So, in reality, you were deceived by him. And that's where it all boils down to. You were deceived, your heart was broken, and let's just face facts. He deceived you. 
And I'm going to say he deceived you because y'all sat there and talked about y'all lives together and how y'all wasn't going to lose contact with each other and how y'all was going to be together, all of this shit. Sometimes, you know what's so fucked up is when people tell you shit that they think you want to motherfucking hear. Like, I say that to my ex-husband, I'm, you know, saying all the time, like, please don't tell me no shit that you think I want to hear. Not even all the time, but I've said it to him enough. And I say that to other people, too. Don't think that you would, don't tell me what you think I want to fucking hear. Because if that's the case, I don't want to hear that shit. All right. And even men, women, whatever, you know what I'm saying? They get in these relationships and they feel like they have to tell you what you want to hear, appease you. If you don't want to be with me like that, then just fucking be real and say that shit. Don't sit up here and lie in my motherfucking face about this shit and be like, yeah, we're going to be together, girl, forever. And we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I'm going to move back home. He lied about this shit. He lied about moving back home. He had no intentions on moving back home. You know what I'm saying? What he did was fucking deceive you. He had no intentions on moving back home with you. He had no intentions on building a life with you. He was building something already with his baby mother. And that's fine. That's cool. He got a kid with her. That's cool. But also, let me tell you something. When I say use it as a learning tool, because that's what I've done with plenty of the relationships that I've been in. I've used them shits as a learning tool. Because the next motherfucking time, I know for the next time that you ain't about to play a bitch, okay? Hold up. You ain't about to play a bitch. And I'm not about to be falling for that old okie doke bullshit. Even when my ex-husband be saying shit to me on the phone, like how much he loved me and stuff. Like, I believe that shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I believe that shit. But I'm not going to let it go in my motherfucking ear and linger around forever and be on cloud nine with that shit. Because some shit is so good said. And then when you see that shit for what it's really worth, it's like, bitch, is it really worth that? You know what I'm saying? Like, even though we've been together for so long, you could be telling me anything that you think I motherfucking want to hear. Or you could be saying this shit because you think it's all good or you're going to get somewhere with it. Not saying that that's what the fuck he does, but that's what a lot of people do in general. And you know what I'm saying? I don't allow none of that shit to get to me. Though, when you're in a really long relationship with somebody, maybe you should. And then again, maybe you shouldn't. I don't want to leave any door open for vulnerability, okay? Just like recently when me and him... You know, he had, um, like I told you guys, he had moved into his own apartment and, um, he had moved into his own apartment and, um, it was, it's a studio. So, and I helped him find it because, you know, he'd be at work and stuff. So I helped him find it. And the day that he moved in was a Friday. Now he had called me early in the morning cause he calls me every morning and it'd be like four o'clock my time and you know, like six o'clock their time. So we'll talk for like a minute or two and then he'll go into work. So that Friday afternoon, he did not call me, did not call me at all. So I was like, cool. I was cool with that because I was busy anyway, editing a vlog, a family vlog video. And when I edit them shits, they take forever. So I really didn't want to talk too much. And plus I knew he was moving in. So I was just like letting him have his face, you know? But Saturday, I didn't hear from him at all. I did not hear from him at all on Saturday, which kind of was like, wow, okay. I called, I, I, I let the whole entire day go by. And then when I called him in the evening, he didn't answer the phone. So I felt like, oh, okay, word. So I got in my feelings and I texted him. And I was like, oh, so you acting all brand new now, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Now you can't answer your phone. So was it it was later that evening i think it was like two hours later he texts me back talking about um whatever he was saying that like he wasn't acting brand new he was cleaning his house his apartment all this now mind you you don't even have anything to move in there but your bed and it's a studio what the fuck you got to really clean that you anywhere earpiece you could at least have the dc to call me and say what's up i said you it takes one minute to call somebody and talk to them you don't we didn't have to have a conversation like that i just want to make sure you okay but okay whatever so when he's texting me that that same night i didn't even respond i just left it alone i didn't even respond the next day was sunday and he had called me sunday morning and it was nine o'clock my time a bitch did not even answer. I looked at that phone. That nigga called me three times back to back. And I sent his ass to fucking um, voicemail two of those times. The first time, I just let it ring, ring, ring. The second time, I was like, fuck that. You going to voicemail. And I sent that shit real quick. So I didn't speak to him at all on Sunday. I didn't even call him um, or nothing. I didn't even want to be bothered at that point. Because I'm. this is me. I'm not about to be your convenience. And that's just how I feel about shit. Don't think you gonna call me when it's convenient to your fucking ass. I don't give a fuck who you are. Don't feel like you gonna call me when it's convenient to you. 
all right? Because I'm nobody's convenience. So Monday, as I'm going, as I'm Monday morning when he's on his way to work, he calls me again at six o'clock. You know, out of habit, I just answered the phone. Now he does have his own ringtone, but I just answered the phone, and I was like, "Hello," with an attitude. And he was like, "You know, what well, I don't remember what he said, but basically, I was like, you know what? I don't got time for you right now. I'm going to sleep and all this, whatever I said." So then he calls me on his lunch break, like always, and we get into it. Lo and behold. That same night, you know what I'm saying, he calls me and I have to tell him, like, you know what? Basically, I'm not about to be your convenience and I'm going I'm to back off a little bit from you because I feel like we're supposed to always be talking to each other on the phone. And if you don't call me or answer your phone, that, that makes me feel some type of way. And I don't need to be all of my feelings about over you. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is not cool because I'm not focusing on my work right now, which is sewing wigs and making videos. And, and you know what I'm saying? And I don't like feeling like this. And so we had to have this long talk. And he apologized. He's like, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't want you to feel that way or whatever. But the, the, the moral of the story is, like, with me, I, I'm not trying to be all in my feelings for nobody because I just really don't want my feelings to get hurt anymore. And on top of that, I just I just don't want my feelings to get hurt anymore about about nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, gr it's great to be in a relationship and shit, but it's hard when you be in a relationship with somebody and you feel like, you know what? Are they are they being truthful? Are they trying to be deceitful? And I guess for me, like, you know what I'm saying? I've been through divorce and then I was in that other relationship with that asshole and it didn't really work out. And I really didn't even want it to work out like that. But it's like, um, you just be feeling like, can you trust this person and that person? And even though you know that this person really, really does care about you and really, really does love you, do you really trust them? And it's kind of like the same thing for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you put your trust in him because y'all was talking about the future together and what y'all were going to do and how y'all were going to spend your lives. And then here it is. He went behind your back and the nigga moved. For one, that was a red flag right there. If y'all was talking about being together and all of this goody good shit, how the fuck you going to just leave town? and not even tell a bitch that right there would have had me tight and i probably would have not fucked with him anymore just because now you the moved out of town on me so i would have red flag red flag would have went up like okay this either this nigga moved out of town with a bitch okay that's the first thing that i would have thought of that's why you didn't tell me regardless of what i would have came to your apartment and you'd be like okay well that was the only way i was going to believe you but I'd have just had a red flag, like, okay, so you moved out of town without telling me. That right there is a red flag. So, I don't know. I don't think I would have kind of, like, built my relationship around with him. And even though y'all are long distance, same thing here with me and him. We've had 19 years together. So, you know what I'm saying? I guess I can build a, a relationship with him long distance because I, you know what I'm saying, you constantly with my son, you know what I'm saying, my ex-husband, he's with my son a lot, um, who lives out there and shit like that, and they're always together, so, I mean, it's a difference, it's a difference, you and him weren't together like that, but it, it doesn't even matter, you know what I'm saying, either way, to me, you was deceived, and I don't like when shit happens like that to people, like, you know, you put all your eggs in a basket, and you, you have all these thoughts about what, what it's gonna be, and the other person is just sitting there lying to you in your face like who does that why would you even do that to somebody like doesn't that make you feel like less of a person to deceive somebody like that like I, I don't I don't think that I could do that to anybody like I have been in other relationships you know what I'm saying with people but and I have probably deceived them but not to the fact that oh we're gonna build a relationship together or oh, we're gonna be able to life together we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that I have never been that deceitful the only deceitful thing i would have probably said was yeah you got a big dick when you really don't and then i would tell you like your dick is little or like you know saying oh yeah i really do like you thank you yes you're such a great person oh yeah we could be together or you know say not even be together because i will let you know right offhand like you're a booty call or not even a booty call but i ain't even trying to be serious with you so i guess my deceit or it ain't even a deceit what i would do it would just basically be like you know I guess I'm telling you what you want to hear, but the deceit thing is like, he knows that you wanted to build a life with him, and he ran with that shit, meaning he was married. Like, I couldn't do any, I couldn't do that to anybody. I guess because I have, a, I have a heart, and I wouldn't want anybody to do that shit to me. It would just be hurtful 
to think that I was going to be with somebody for this amount of time. There's like levels to that shit too. Like when you're in a relationship with somebody and you really don't want to be in a relationship with them or you're not even feeling them like that, then there's levels to that shit. Like you don't, you don't just make up a big ass story and tell the person, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Especially if you know that person is feeling you and they talking about marriage and they talking about being with you for a legit amount of time. That's when you need to let that person know like, you know what, bitch, I really do like you and shit, but I ain't really trying to fuck with you like that you know and, and, and there's ways to say it. you don't have to necessarily say it like that you know what i'm saying but i think like you're old you you, you you're old an explanation like why would he do that to you i think he owes you an explanation of why he did that to you that's just my opinion like it's deceitful and i think it was wrong and i understand how you feel but at the same aspect don't put yourself down for him because he's really not worth your time and he's really not worth it if he's deceitful like that to you i can only imagine how he's going to be to his wife because in reality he was deceiving that bitch too she thinking she the only one in reality is she not there's you and i mean you could be a bitch and be like oh well you know what i'm saying there was me, but you know what? You're bigger than that, and you don't have to do that. And then again, he doesn't even have Facebook to do that, so it doesn't even matter. But like I said, all of this stuff that you have just learned about him, you take that as a lesson and you and, and as a learning tool, and you use it for the next relationship that's going to come along, and that's going to be better. And I say it's going to be better because you're not going to allow the shit that has just happened happen to you again. You understand what I'm saying? Like, what you've learned from this relationship, you're going to take that into your old, your new relationship, and you're going to realize, okay, this new nigga, he ain't about, I'm not about to sit there with him on the phone and talk about life goals and relationship goals with him. We're just going to play that shit by ear. And if it work out, then that motherfucker work out. And if it don't, well, then I'm moving the fuck on. That's how I do the shit. And I don't do the shit like that anymore because, you know what I'm saying, or I don't do it in general, but... What I'm saying is that's how I would do it. If that were me, that's how I would do it. I ain't about to... Listen, let me tell you something, bitches. Never let them see you motherfucking sweat, okay? If you if you head over heels for a motherfucker, don't let them see that shit too often. Because for real, I thought that was my dog. They will use that shit to their advantage, meaning... They'll run with that shit. They'll be like, ah, oh, shorty feeling me, blah, blah, blah. Shorty really feeling me. Yeah. It's cool to let a nigga know how you feeling him. But be careful with that shit. Because sometimes that shit will backfire on your ass. And they will use that shit to their advantage. Trust me. I know that. I have to get my brush. I finally washed this wig. Like I washed it probably like twice all that time I had it, it was so hairsprayed up, it felt so hard. So now it's like dumb saw. Yes, I said dumb saw and like don't tangle as much now because it was so much hairspray in it, like for real, that it would just I could feel the hard. It had like this different feel to it. But I was cool with that because listen, ain't nobody gotta touch my motherfucking hair. But now it's just like so um full and shit. I love it though. This is I made the I made the other one. Let me tell y'all about that real quick before we end this. So I made a new blonde one. I showed y'all the hair last week. But I wanted to use a different color brown in the um streaks. So I get um this the, this color that I put in this one was like a chestnut brown or whatever. Chestnut red or whatever. Some shit like that. So I was like, I'm gonna get medium ash brown. That shit did not look right. Oh, it looks horrible. And I was so upset, like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I can't make this. I can't wear this. So I had to look on YouTube and thank God for YouTube. I found like this tutorial tutorial of how to remove hair color from your hair. So you got to get some vitamin C pills, 500 milligrams, but I got a thousand milligrams and some head and shoulders. So I got the Walmart brand and mix it together. Y'all can look it up, but let me tell y'all shit. First of all, you got to open up the cuticles in the hair. So if it's on your head, you got to, you got to wash your hair in hot water for as hot as you can take it. So being that it was just extensions, I put that shit in some hot ass water. Like all the dye damn there came out of the hair because it was hot, hot water. And it looked like tea in the sink. And um, then I did the pill and bite on the hair head and shoulder treatment that shit would now it looked like this the color it got streaks in it but it's like a these same color streaks which is fine 
because let me tell you something I am not trying that shit again what I guess I ain't gonna try no different colors anymore I'm gonna just stick to what the fuck I know okay that's what the fuck I'm gonna do stick to what I know but I was like, damn, I should have did a tutorial on how I did this shit. But you know what? I'm going to fuck something up again. I'm telling y'all, I'm going to fuck something up again. And then I'll be able to show y'all. For real. But, yes, Gabby, don't let his fucking bad intentions bring you down. You're a human being, and you should never feel bad about wanting to be devoted to somebody and treating them right, okay? Never feel that way. You're a human being. He's the one who lost out, so never, never, ever, ever feel that way. So now I'm going to hairspray this shit down. So, you guys, I got to go. I got to go to Bath and Body Works and shit like that. But let me tell y'all, I got to figure out which perfume I wanted to wear today. So you guys already know how I feel about Octoly. I've been getting all of these really, really nice, expensive perfumes from there. Perfumes that I wouldn't even dare to buy for myself. Well, because I don't really buy myself too much. But this is the Dahlia Divine Eau de Parfum Nude, which is by Givenchy. I love this one because I have been using this for a minute. The packaging is real chic. And let me tell you something. If you want to smell good for him or her, bitches, then definitely check this one out. Um, the packaging of it is really sleek, but the bottle is really, really elegant, okay? Really nice bottle. It reminds me of a Chanel bottle for some reason. It's gorgeous. Um, it's a very light scent, which smells so good. Hmm, Dahlia is what she's called. Um, I think Givenchy has some really great perfumes, to be honest. Um, this is the second one that I've owned by them. The first one was like this pink bottle, um, and I still have it. Um, I forget what it's called because I don't want to go over there, but it's a really great perfume also. They have like these really powerful light scents. Like it's a light scent, but it's very feminine. And I like that a lot. Plus the bottle, like I said, reminds me of a Chanel bottle a lot. You know those Chanel number five, I think it is. It reminds me a lot of that. And I just like the scent of it. Plus the size of it is amazing, especially from Oxley. But for the price point, I mean, if you want something that's really, really you know, good smelling, then I would definitely say this, this to have him like wanting you, like seriously, like it's like a very sexy scent. You know what I'm saying? It's like some perfumes are very overpowering and they can smell so good and they're very potent, but some of them are not sexy. Like my um, Angel by Terry Mugler, Mugler. It's a very, very beautiful scent because it's very powerful. And sometimes it can smell like it's unisex. Um, unisex. That one is it's a very nice scent, but I don't think like if I was to put on a teddy like a negligee, I don't think it would be like a sexy scent because it's so very potent and the smells are not like a sexy scent smell. It's just like um, a powerful scent. Like you know what I'm saying? Like a boss bitch scent. This one is more very feminine. This is a very, very feminine scent. So I do like this one a lot. In the bottle, like I said, it reminds me of Chanel number no. five. It's a very chic bottle and it's just so clear. And I like the fact that it is like a brownish kind of peaches color. I noticed that when I see like a perfume that's very brown, it just reminds me of like some old school perfume, which I don't know. It's like a turn off to me. But this one is a very, very classic scent. It's a very classic scent, but a very sexy scent. And then I also have this, which I showed in a vlog, a blog that I didn't post up yet. But I did show this before, but it was the, um, there are two of them. Um... There are actually two of these. So this is the Black Opium Collector's Edition by Saint Laurent. And this is this the Black Opium. So this is the first one that I showed you guys. And it does have glitter on it. But this one is the Collector's Edition that I did get also from um, Oxley. And I do love this scent so much. I really did think that this was going to be like a different scent. Now this scent is like a really powerful scent. Now to be honest, would this be a sexy scent to me? I don't really think that this would be a sexy scent to me only because it's very very potent you know what I'm saying like it's not unisex but to me like I don't find like this scent is like a sexy scent 
but it's a very, very like meaningful scent. Like they know you come in when you wear this, like serious. Like, so the bottles are smaller and this is just like more glitterized. Either way, their bottles are so pretty. I love the bottles for a Saint Laurent. Like it's something totally different and it's very chic. And I mean like, yeah, I've got two perfumes of the same, whatever, whatever, but I'll definitely use them or maybe not. Maybe I'll just give this one to my mom when I go to New York. You know, she does like to wear perfume as well. But this scent is a it's a nice scent. I think, like, for this, I would wear, like, jeans and a T-shirt. And, you know what I'm saying? I would wear, like, jeans and a T-shirt or, like, sweater weather or, like, a business suit. Like, you know how you got these boss women who wear business attire. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is something that I will wear with that. I don't know why. I'm, well, I do know why. It's because it's just, like, it has this smell, like, this statement smell that says, I'm here. Hear me raw. You smell me coming. Yes, it's me. That's what it says. And it just, it just screams, I'm strong. And I'm, like, really, really independent. And I'm fearless, like for real. And then you have this one that's delicate. You would wear it with like a nice evening gown and like some really like country type of shorts or just like some easy going outfit. It, they just have totally different scents and totally different vibes to me, which is cool because I have my days where I feel like when I'm in a bad mood and I'm in a rough mood, I would definitely put this on. And I guess that goes to say with the packaging as well because it's very dark, okay? It's very dark. Black opium, okay? Hello, and then we got Dahlia. Dahlia. I could be really sweet and sexy, and at the same time, you really just don't know. So I do like these both a lot. Um, Givenchy and um, Saint Laurent do have some really great perfumes. They have become my favorite. Um, also, I do like Giorgio Armani as well. They got some really good Giorgio Armani, like Giorgio Giorgio Armani Code. That one is like one of my favorites, um, for real. That one smells so good. But yes, you can definitely check out Oxley. They have some really great finds on there. I love the things that I get sent. And all you have to do is have like a certain amount of subscribers. I think it's either 5,000 for Instagram. Now I'm not really sure, but I will post a link below. So if you guys do social media, get you some free stuff. I love getting free stuff, especially like really expensive free stuff. Like, hello, it's Saint Laurent lipstick and Givenchy setting powder. I did show these. Let me tell you something. I don't know how much this stuff costs retail, but I'm pretty sure April wouldn't be spending her coins for them. I would find a dupe. But I love this lipstick. I wear it like every single day. Um, it's one of my favorites. You guys know I love like these nudish color, light colors. The packaging is so divine as well. So I'm just saying. So yes, you guys, I love you. I hope this real talk was like making sense to you guys. I'm going to go get me some good, good, good goods from Bath and Body Works. They should give me a freaking bath card something like right what do you guys think like they should be nice and send me something oh i hate when my wig don't stay in place see what i'm saying about those wig grip bands so not worth the time and the money that you purchase them with love you guys stay diva and delicious make sure you watch my new vlog it's an hour and 30 minutes for watching it i love you bye Real trap shit.